crazy because I have it pinned up. It has been extremely rainy the past couple days and I turn into Ron Frizzle. So I, yes, <laughs> I'm on my way to actually do a jury duty research project. Um, so they're doing research with a jury to, uh, see if this real case is going to go to trial here locally. Uh, hence why I have my Olivia Pope sweater on. I know she's not a lawyer, but that's who I think of when I wear this. Um, actually, is it Morgan Elise? Or is it Morgan Elise's mom? I don't know. Anyway, don't listen to me. Um, but because my morning was interrupted, we won't get into it. Um, but I'm excited to do this. I've actually never been called for regular jury duty. So getting the opportunity to do this like jury duty research thing without the pressure of it being someone's actual life, uh, I like that a lot. <laughs> um, because that's something else that is always very icky to me about the justice system. Everybody's opinions are so subjective. The laws were written in a, let's just say biased way. I'm keeping it light for Monday. Um, and so a lot of things, yes, are black and white and right or wrong, but then some things get into that gray area and it's like, there's no laws for that. So you really have to rely on people, but everyone's opinion is different. So stuff like that sure is easy. It makes me feel better. <laughs> um, plus I'm getting paid, so yay. Uh, but yeah, headed there. Haven't updated in a while. Um, I lost a good friend from wrestling and I haven't really been dealing with it well. And so that's where I'm at. That's why vlog has been not vlogging and life has been kicking my ass a little bit more than usual because it was unexpected and very sudden and nobody's fault. It's just really sad and really exhausted considering I've not stopped going through previous grief cycles and I'm now entering another one. So mentally I am <clears throat> that meme of the little dog in the burning room. But I am moving today and I'm up to take a shower and I am dressed and I'm on enough ashwagandha, maca, and l theanine to power a spaceship. So I am powering through this day with positivity and prayer and faith. I'm gonna do some meditation later. Um, uh oh, oh my goodness. I am headed, or as I was saying, I am just kind of powering through the day uh, and trying to also think about a way of how I'm going to be able to honor my friends. I will do a separate vlog about it. I don't really want to go into that, and also it's very personal, but I do want to celebrate who he was, so at an appropriate time, I'll like, you know, do something. But I don't, I don't know. I'm just kind of numb to all the sadness and feeling overwhelmed yet again with the ocean of grief that seems to not be stopping since 2020. So yeah, also considering, I don't really have my new family feel. Okay, so come to find out after my therapist abruptly quit, which I'm not even sure what the hell that was about. Um, my sessions are like out, but she didn't let me know that. So I met with a new therapist because they were like, Hey, uh, you haven't had an appointment in 30 days. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Trust me. I'm aware. I'm out here struggling to fall. Um, but they matched me up with this different therapist, you know, just to have one. 
And she's cool. I, you know, I didn't. Okay, things are happening. It was just a temporary, you know, situation, right? And then I don't know how they're gonna bill for that session because I haven't put my new insurance on them yet. And the insurance that I get uh, currently is no longer covering mental health. America, oh yeah. So, the saga and journey continues. I can start the therapy through my school, through my university, but I graduated in May, so that would stop again, right? So that's building a whole nother relationship and trust bond with the therapist to have it not continue because I graduated and I can't continue to use the university services once I become alumni, at least that. And so I have new insurance through school that I was, I'm not going to say forced to get, but was legit forced to get uh, because I found out like once it got billed to me, if I don't pay, like I wouldn't graduate and get my uh, diploma and stuff because there would be a hole on my account. So I was forced to get it because they didn't accept the insurance I currently had. had. They said it wasn't enough coverage. And I'm like, oh my God, what? Because the insurance I have isn't enough coverage already for me. I know that, but I have insurance and you're making me, you're telling me I have to have insurance. So I have it, why are we? So got that big old bill, called the people to be like, hey, I recently moved, so I honestly don't know where my insurance information is. And was like, it's on the website, you can go there. And I'm like, I'm on the phone with you. So obviously if I wanted to go to the website, I would have done that, but I'm on the phone with you because you have a number for me to call. Because I like to speak to a person, especially when I have questions. Because your FAQ page is not sufficient. By the way, I already went to the website, thank you. Like. So Snarky McSnarkerson backed down after we had a polite little conversation about customer service and being efficient with help and described to me my coverage, which is basically the same thing I already have, except I get vision. Oh my gosh. So what the, all right. So with the insurance I presently have, which was covering my therapy, I did not have a copay. All right, so, you know, it's a lot, and I miss my friend. Um, and of course I was listening to Spotify and it was playing like a playlist that was just full of music that he enjoyed and I also enjoy and her enjoy. So it's just been, things aren't stellar. So that's why there's been no, that randomly cut off earlier because I had, I arrived at the place and had to get a move on. Uh, to get in there. Luckily, me being a few minutes behind because of traffic wasn't like a big deal because other people were behind and they didn't have everything set up that they needed to to get started. Um, so it worked out. It has been a really interesting process. So as I mentioned, I'm doing jury duty research. So the case is real and it is a pretty big case. Um, I'm interested to see if this is going to continue because if it does, it's gonna set a crazy precedent for some things. I'm not allowed to talk about anything else, but uh, just know it's like some law and order type shit. It's crazy. So we are on a break now, but we will be hearing more stuff later. Uh, so I'm running before eight this morning. So it is now 12.42, so I'm going to rush home, feed them, walk them, and then try to get back. They're in the process of interviewing all the people, so time is kind of working against me because I don't know how quickly everybody's gonna give their opinion. There are some people who are very loquacious there, so I'm sure that they're gonna talk for a little bit. And they have about 12 or 19 people to get through. 
So it'll be a little while, but I'm still like trying to get there and get back because I don't want to miss anything. Um, and I have to make sure I have all the information and I don't want to not get paid because I've all, all violated something. <laughs> but yes, it is a crazy experience so far. I... Um, but I can't. I already signed the NDA and the confidentiality agreement and from the state of North Carolina, a confidentiality agreement from the courts. So yeah, mum's the word, but it's just a really crazy case. It's really kind of sad, like based on what happened to, but it's interesting to see everyone's perspective. Let me tell you, people are peopling right now. Like, there's this one lady who was being so vocal and, like, laughing and, like, making jokes and, like, just being really disruptive. And I'm like, lady, I may not agree with everything that's being said either, but you're also preventing people from hearing details, which is not okay. Because everybody needs to be able to hear and see everything. We already had to play one video, like, four times because the guy wanted us to hear something and we literally couldn't hear it on the video. She will be a bit more mum and I can hear more things and we can have more of a focused discussion. So far, they have just interviewed us individually about what we wrote down like in our notes and on our papers and stuff. And I think they actually read all of them because they were like, you took really detailed notes. And I was like, yeah, I'm fucking Harriet the Spy. What the fuck? Like, actually, I think I would be more like Harriet and mixed with Carmen Sandiego with a dash of Olivia Pope. <laughs> Yes, because fashion. Um, but so when we go back, we are going to have to uh, talk as a group because they interviewed us individually to get our take on the case and to answer a few questions that they had, um, you know, on their end because it's a research thing. So it's kind of like a focus group, and, you know, to get our opinion on the case uh, and kind of see how things would go. And I see why they're doing that because again, it's a big case and the people that are involved, they ain't trying to pay no money. Let me just say that. So I think they are doing this to see how, how much of a chance they're gonna have to come up on them ducats that they're going to. And it's looking like they're going to have to. And it's so funny to watch these people like flounder, like, well, what did you think about this? I'm like, bitch, this is what I thought. Like, it's not gonna change just cause y'all wanted to change. That's crazy. So, uh, I'm really enjoying myself. It is not what I thought it was gonna be, but it's definitely a fun experience. I'm also getting all my schoolwork done uh, in the moments that we have breaks, which is awesome! Because your girl needs to stay on top of everything. I did miss an assignment last week uh, because she only accepts one excuse per session or semester, and that's with or without a note. Like. Even if you have a note, she's only going to accept, um, she's just not going to fail you. But you still get points off, and you still don't get full credit, even if it's a legitimate reason. So I, I have a legitimate reason, she's still not going to accept it, so I haven't been pressed to turn in my third draft, but I do need to work on it so that my, or my second draft, so that my third draft and my fourth draft aren't like piling up on me, because uh, graduation is right around the corner like I'm done with school in a couple weeks so all of this these drafts are gonna like be coming quickly I already have a journal that's due on Wednesday and I had a journal that was due last week but our first journal was back like way early in the semester I don't know everything's crazy it's so writing and then I'm going to uh, get back right in the car and go back and right now while we're on break we had lunch they got us Panera because I am off car, like literal no bread until after the Uncanny show. Um, they had sandwiches and I was like, oh my God, I would so love to eat this ricotta bread, but no. I'm really upset because I love bread and pasta and carbs so much, but I gotta cut weight fast and that's the easiest way for me to do it. So, um, but we had lunch and so now our time is technically our own and I already did my interview but I still want to get back before, you know, everything reconvenes. I'm interested to see what the next part is. I guess that will be the closing argument for uh, the other people because we already heard one. Um, so yeah, I guess that's what's next, but I don't really know. Why is it the gas is like every three seconds? I don't, I literally got gas yesterday. So annoying. 
any hoodles. Oh, I had directing class yesterday. Um, I really wasn't feeling it, you know, um, because of everything that's going on. I just, my head was not in the space, but I'm glad I went and I definitely learned a lot about bodies in space. We did a really cool activity where we had to take a memory, break it down into vignettes, break it down into stop motion and then turn it into a full movie, so to speak. Uh, and like unfold the scene that way. Uh, there's a term for it that I wrote down, but I kind of forgot about it. Derisive? Derive? I think that's it. I don't know. It'll be here when I remember. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was such a cool experience. I'm really liking learning about directing. Uh, I hope I didn't miss a whole bunch of crucial information, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting caught up this week with that because it's like every other week I have one. Um, and I will be turning in my draft for new ink project. Like everything that I didn't get done this past week because grief and depression has been keeping me in a vice grip, um, I'm doing today. So right now I'm doing schoolwork during the breaks for this jury duty thing. And then when I get out of the jury duty thing, um, I have my company's events that we're having, like the cook-off. Um, I'll be teaching my heels class and Juneteenth events and stuff like that. I have to do all the promotion and set up all the stuff for that. Then I have all of my passive income stuff I have to go check in on because I haven't really updated any of that. So there's lots of work to be done. Lots of things to do to make this a very productive day. I'm really looking forward to um, having the time to fiddle with the script that I'm sending for New Voices this will be my mission for them to look through um, to approve so I'm actually excited how that's coming together and like thinking about now as a director or becoming a director and how I would be directing these different things and how to infuse the work as the playwright and the director with with the things I want to come across it's a lot I'm learning so much it's, it's such a cool process um, and I love flexing this muscle as well uh, as an actor and now a playwright. So it's gonna be super dope. So almost home to take care of the dogs. I will hit you guys. Finally out of the jury research experiment or research experience. It has been a crazy day and sitting in and actually doing jury duty but not during doing jury duty was so bizarre. The case was crazy and there were so many moving parts and I learned a lot about the law from the lawyers who were there representing and presenting and like defining stuff for us. So that was really cool to like be in that situation. Cause like I said, I've never done jury duty before. Um, and then they brought in one of the people involved in the case. And I was like, oh my God, don't do that. Cause I want to remain objective. And it was hard to do that, you know, to be objective after the fact, but given the facts of the case and what you can actually see, you know, things should work out the way and confidentiality agreements and since the case is active we also don't want to compromise you know the plaintiff or the defendant we don't want anybody to not have a fair shot at this situation so keeping details on the mum but I will say if I was in the jury it would be an easy decision for me but I understood the perspective of the people who were having a difference of opinion for mine and I just would not want to be on that jury because I'm sure they're gonna have a, a long time to deliberate because based on the questions in my focus group I can only imagine what a jury which is a larger selection of the population is going to think so crazy so now I'm on my way to my new place I was able to sneak out and get the dogs taken care of and get back without being detected. So yay me, Ninja Ron. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm going to my new place. I need to pick up my grill because I'm going to do some grilling, but my mom's grill is crappy. Um, so today is a down day. I'm trying to keep myself at a certain level so I don't spiral, but I am definitely struggling a lot. Uh, the loss of my friend and that bringing up stuff about mom and other people I've lost recently. A grief spiral is probably top five worst things, emotionally speaking. I'm sure the government will find a way to weaponize this as a form of torture. I said what I said. Um. 
boot and a boot had to mail something to a friend who was also experiencing grief and running other errands. And then I had lots and lots of homework to finish. I was going to do some things earlier today that involved me being around people and my anxiety flared up really badly. So I decided not to do those things, but still struggling with my anxiety and stress and depression. So, um, just trying to muddle through this day and be as present and realistically pos positive as possible, if that makes sense. Um, I do have some cool things coming up and things to look forward to. So that's on the mind. I was recently asked to participate in a really cool acting project that'll take place during Pride Month. So I'm looking forward to that coming together really soon. I have my meeting regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion coming up next week. So preparing for that. Confirming all of my guests for graduation because you only get a certain amount of tickets. I was able to score two more tickets, so I am waiting on confirmation since we have to travel out of town for my graduation. It's a little more challenging for people to attend. Um, but there will be a virtual option, so <laughs> yay streaming. Um, new voices going. I have that this week. I will be doing that as well as some of my other assignments that are a bit late due to what's been going on. I really mentally haven't been able to get myself as uh, in motion as I would like. And in this current what's gonna happen with my therapist uh, conundrum, that has made things a little bit more complicated. So here's hoping that all of my tools that I use for my anxiety and depression can kick into high gear today and I can stay grounded and get done what I need to and rest my mind hopefully later. I don't actually know if that's going to happen <laughs> but I will remain optimistic that it does.